And today is Pentecost Day. And in Acts chapter 2, as we look at the slides, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord. And that is so important in any prayer meeting. You can have general prayer meetings where come one, come all. As a matter of fact, even witchcraft can come in prayer meetings, general prayer meetings. But there is a time when you want to press through for the breakthrough. And you have to use the Jesus model where he had a faith cluster that he prayed with only them, Peter, James, John. Because with Jesus, Peter, James, John, there was complete unity. Judas was not around. Others who were in competition were not around. He knew that he could bring something to the altar with total unity, trust, agreement, loyalty, unwavering faith to pray. And so when the, when the Bible says they came in one accord, means they came in unity. And these were disciples that had failed before. They ran from Jesus at the cross. But now their mind was up. They were in one place, one mindset, one intention, one determination, one language, the language of faith. This prayer meeting in the upper room was not a come one, come all. Some people by then was ashamed of Jesus. Some people who called him rabbi had said crucify him. Them. And so he, these were people that they knew were believers in Christ. And that unity and in one place, people, you can do all things. Genesis 11 says, if as God says, if as one mind, they decide to build a tower of Babel, they cannot be stopped. So the only way he could protect the earth from destroying themselves too quickly is to create confusion of languages. They couldn't understand each other because unity is so powerful, God says, that if he finds it, that place, all things are possible. That's why it's so hard to have unity in marriage, unity in relationships, unity at the office, Unity, because unity is so powerful that it can transform your business, transform your life, transform you into the place of all possibilities. And so they were together in one place. Let's get over the past and move forward. And because of that great unity in Acts chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, they created a suddenly, they triggered something in heaven that affected earth even to this day. It says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there were appeared and them divided tongues as a fire, tongues of fire sat on each one. Now here it is, the Shekinah glory of God, which means God with us, came as a rushing mighty wind. The very breath of God came in that room violently to blow away fears, to blow away their, their mistakes, to blow away the failures, to blow away the shame. The breath of God symbolizes new birth. The breath of God is the Ruach of God, the first breath of a baby. The power of God came upon the believers to birth a movement called Christianity and to birth the church of Christ. People of God, today is Pentecost Sunday. And we're going to believe that the breath of the Lord will come in this service today. And it's going to blow away your shame. It's going to blow away your past mistakes. God says this is a new day. Let's get over it. No more harassment in your mind. No more thinking, I wish I did this. I wish I didn't do that. Move forward. This is a new decade. This is a new day. And my breath is going to blow away anything that can 
block you from moving into another level of faith. People of God, if you're ready, lift up your hand and say, God, I am ready. I am ready for a new day in this new decade. I am ready to see God operating my life as never before. I am ready for the outpouring of double glory. Breath of God, breathe upon me. Life, what is dead? Lift up your hands, people. Breath of God, life, what is dead? Breath of God, life, what is dead? Breath of God, life, what is dead? Rosh the Akarabakasata. Breath of God, life, even brain cells in the name of Jesus. Breath of God, life arteries, life vein. Breath of God, breathe upon your people in the name of Jesus. Breath of the Almighty. Oh, breath. Oh, breath. God said to his servant, summon the breath to bring life to the bones. Summon the breath to bring life to the bones. People of God, if you have dead bones, if you had things that are dead and you know that it was demonic, the breath of God is common. I summon the breath of God from the north. I summon the breath of God from the south. I summon the breath of God from the west. I summon the breath of God from the east. Breath of God, breathe life. Resurrect, resurrect our glory. In the name of Jesus. So lift up your hands. The breath of God is here. The breath of God is here. Rashtia. Rua, 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 breath of God. Rua, 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 breath of God breath of the almighty breath of the almighty breath of the almighty you robo begin to pray in the spirit people of god robo koshata open your mouth and begin to spray in the spirit open it and say it so that god can hear it and demons can hear it speak don't just pray in your mind now i'm going to listen to the instruction because a move of god has instruction rashtia karobo so mikarabanda ro karabakasa Breath of God, breath of the Almighty, life, your church. In Jesus' name. And the Bible says the, the tongues of fire, like fire, come and sat in each one. And the power of unity is that each one get blessed. We, we tend to move towards disunity and move towards competition you can't compete with glory glory has an owner he commands it and he gives it as his will so when you cooperate in unity everyone get blessed come on lift up your hands and say god i don't want to miss it i don't want to miss it turn to the person beside you and i don't want you to miss it either i'm not gonna keep all this to myself i'm not gonna hog all this to myself breath of god wind of god blow in everyone as tongues of fire tongues of fire tongues of fire ignite hearts ignite hearts ignite minds ignite Womb, breath, rua, 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 tongues of fire. Romasha, Brobo Koshad, Yeka Rambaka Sata, Rashe Kalaba Sate, Mekaraba, Shekinah Glory, Shekinah Glory, Wind and Fire, Shekinah Glory, Wind and Fire. Summon your power, oh God. Send your angels. Shekinah glory. Wind and fire. Shekinah glory. When the fire came in the upper room, it reminds us of, and it was a theophany that they call a theophany. It means the pre-incarnate Christ came in the room. And the fire of God manifests many times in the Old Testament. And now we're seeing that 
we didn't recognize, it's almost we never understood that Jesus did not begin in Mary's womb. Jesus is God. He was from before the beginning. And so the manifestation of Jesus many times, we didn't call him Jesus because he didn't have that flesh name, but he was always the Christ, son of the living God. So in Daniel chapter 3, verses 23 to 25, they had thrown three Hebrew boys in the fire because they wouldn't bow to the God of Baal. And Nebuchadnezzar begged them, bow, because if you don't bow, uh, you will burn. But the Holy Spirit to them says, if you don't burn, bow, you cannot burn. Because God is the hottest fire. And God is going to show himself as the consuming fire. And so in Daniel chapter 3, verses 23, it says, These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, firmly tied, fell into the blazing fire. Firmly tied. In other words, no escape. And so King Nebuchadnezzar now leaped to his feet, to his amazement, because he's saying, what is going on? <laughs> Weren't there three men who were tied up and we threw them into the fire to burn because they didn't bow before me? Certainly, O king. But he said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of God. Oh, people of God, lift up your hand. Jesus was, Jesus is, and Jesus is to come. Jesus was, Jesus is, and Jesus is to come. Jesus is, and Jesus was, and Jesus is to come. The consuming fire of God. Break their chains, unbound them, untie them, loose them, and then go around them as a wall of fire that no other fire can touch you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People of God, no other fire can touch you. If the enemy raise up a holy fire, an unholy fire against you today, this, the fire of God is around you. Unholy altars, unholy witchcraft unholy thing anything the enemy would have raised up against you the consuming fire of God will protect you and burn up their altars against you in the name of Jesus no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you God himself shall condemn because the consuming fire of God is the greatest fire come on somebody say fire 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 Say fire, fire, fire. Rashe kalabasata. The fire was so hot. Fourth man. And, and they call him a fourth man. And then Nebuchadnezzar, as, as, as crazy as he was, he says, But it looked like the Son of God. Yes, you're right. Jesus, the Son of God, will make you bow to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, people. Come on, people, open your mouth and say, Satan, don't mess with my God. You understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Amazing grace. Amazing power. People of God, this is Pentecost Sunday. This is what's happening today. Turn to the person beside you and say, get ready for today. 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 Today is my miracle. Today is my freedom. Today is my deliverance. Today is my blessing. Now someone fire say fire of God. Fire of God. Fall on me. Say fall on me. Say fire of God. Fire of God. Fall on me. Rosh Jesus, the consuming fire is the hottest fire. More powerful than any fire. Understand what I'm saying? It means that if anyone build an altar against you with fire, the consuming fire will come and burn up the fire and boom around in the name of Jesus. Where it came from, go back. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody clap unto the greatest fire. 
God told Abraham to build an altar with a sacrifice. He sought God. He says, God, my prayers are not being answered. I don't know what to do. And God says, build me an altar. And Abraham went and got some animals and he cut them and he put them on the altar to begin to bring fire and everything. And all of a sudden, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch came and passed between his offerings. And God came down and confirmed his blessing. People of God, when we collect our offering today, this is Pentecost Sunday. A smoking fire pot. Is be specific. Write on the envelope what you want to burn up today. What you want to deal with today. If it's a sickness. If it's a plague. If it's a whatever. And the consuming fire of God is going to come upon your offering. And the word of the Lord is saying, now I gave you that promise and nothing will stop it. You and your wife will have a son. And out of that son is going to come generations. And out of that generations, I won't tell you the rest of it. But if you would only know, Abraham, out of that generation will come the son of the living God and take on your flesh. People of God, lift up your hand. I said you cannot imagine what God God is going to do that which is negative is going to become positive and that which the enemy is attacking you is is going to be the greatest glory in your life somebody shout glory say glory say I'm ready for glory outpouring of glory consuming fire and then God son of man son of God Appeared to Moses in a burning bush. And Moses minding his own business on the job. And he looked and he see what th that tree is burning, but it's not burning up. So I don't understand it. The trees is burning and the leaves stay green. The tree is burning and the barks and the branches are standing. Uh, let me go and see it. And so Moses walk over to look at this phenomenon. And all of a sudden, phenomenon began. The bush talked to him. Out of that bush came the voice, Moses, Moses. And Moses answered the tree. Yes, Lord. So at least this wasn't that dumb. He knew this must be God. And then God said to Moses, lie down, for you are now on holy ground. Lift up your hands. The place where you are is now holy ground. And God has come down to bless you. God has come down to release you. God has come down to use you in another level of ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is time for us to go into another level of glory. We're going to be operating in double glory. We're going to have authority in four dimension. You're going to have authority in the heaven, authority on the earth, authority under the earth, and authority in the sea. Wherever the demons are, God is going to make us, the church, be the savior of every nation. The church is the savior of Canada. The, the believers are the savior of Africa. Believers are the savior of Malaysia. Believers are the savior of North America, Europe, Russia, Ukraine. I'm telling you, we're looking for the U UN United Nations. But Jesus Christ, there's a time when he says, enough is enough. <laughs> and he comes down and summon his power. And Nebuchadnezzar king bow before God or I will make you insane lift up your hands and say God I respect you I fear you and I love you the burning bush he was with the children of Israel as cloud by day and fire by night the consuming fire was with the children of Israel in the wilderness. Elijah called down, God, who answers my fire, come down and burn my altar and discredit the altars of Jezebel. And he did. Now in the upper room, the disciples are praying. And God came down as tongues of fire. People of God, lift up your hands. We are here in this upper room, a place dedicated for the presence of God. 
We worship him. We brought sacrifice of worship. And we are going to bring sacrifices of our tithes and offerings. But we are honoring God today. We are believing in God today. Let's believe in the resurrection and the life today. Because Jesus died, but he rose again. And the resurrection and the life is here today. And he's going to bring his wind and the tongues of fire. And he's going to fill us again with the Holy Ghost. And we're going to speak in tongues. We're going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost today in Jesus' name. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in another tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. People of God, if you are a believer in Christ, you can also be baptized with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in tongues. And God wants everybody here today that believes in Jesus to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You're going to get your prayer language. The Holy Spirit is going to give you a prayer language. Because why? Because it's a mysterious language that you don't even know what you're saying. But the devil don't know what you're saying. He gets confused and you're agreeing perfectly with God. That's part of God's gift to you. To have the Holy Spirit give you another language. Some, some of you already speak in several languages. Now this is the Holy Spirit language. Where you connect with the Holy Spirit. And it's, and it's a private conversation between you and God. In Jesus name. Lift up your hands right now. Begin to worship God. Begin to say glory, 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 glory. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and say glory. And keep repeating glory. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Robo Soto. And at some point, as you give glory to God, God will take over and begin to speak in another language. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. And by faith, hear another language coming out of you. It might sound like stuttering, but let the stuttering come out. Because the stuttering will become a sign that the Holy Spirit has taken over your tongue. And now you can speak in another language. Language that the devil don't know nobody know except your God it's called perfectly praying by the power of the Holy Spirit by faith begin to pray fill us with the Holy Spirit Jesus this is the day of Pentecost fill us with the Holy Spirit Remember people, if you don't open your mouth, the Holy Spirit is not going to force it open. Worship God with a sound. Glory, glory, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This overshadowing is the same kind of overshadowing that happened to Mary. In Luke 1, 35, the angel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so that the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Sadeen shared this morning that the Holy Spirit overshadowed her father, drove out the demons, and he called Jesus his Lord Jesus. Oh, people of God, the birth of Christ. In a man confused all his life. God is so powerful. The resurrection and the life. Oh, people of God, let the birth of Christ come upon us again. And ignite and awaken this great God who is in us. Christ in us, the hope of God. Christ in us. In Colossians 1.27, it says to them, God has chosen to make known make known he's going to tell everybody among the gentiles now he's going to make known the glorious riches of this mystery what is the mystery christ in you the hope of glory if you believe in jesus christ please stand to your feet I can tell you this, as God is my witness, 
that each one of us, each one of you, you are two people. Put your hands on your belly. Christ is in you. Christ is in you. You understand? Christ was birthed in you. And he is the hope of glory for your family. He's the hope of glory for your health. He's the hope of glory for your prosperity. He's the hope of glory for your victory. If Christ is in you, no weapon formed against you can prosper. Children and young people in school, you carry God. Understand what I'm saying? You are a God carrier. And therefore, all things are possible with Christ in you. He is God. He can make you walk on water if you have that kind of faith. He can make you prosper in spite of the curses you have heard all your life. He can set you free from a spirit of confusion in the name of Jesus. He can heal your brain and heal dementia in the name of Jesus. He can heal Alzheimer's in the name of Jesus. Christ in you, come on, touch your belly. What you're feeling this morning is not toast. It's not the toast that is making your belly feel firm. Christ in you. And David touched his belly and said, Awake my glory. Awake my glory. Come on, God. Touch your belly. Say, Awake. Awake my glory. Awake Christ in me. Awake. 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 When David prayed that prayer, he was living in a cave, but in the name of Jesus, the King of Glory awakened David. And by the time you look around, he began to live in a palace. That King Saul tried to kill him 11 times. He says, God, I cannot die like this. Awake, awake my glory. And the enemies were destroyed and David become king. People of God, lift up your hand. Let your destiny be awakened. Let your calling be awakened. Let your destiny be awakened. Let the job that God is providing for you now, let it come forth now. Let the promotion that was hindered come forth now. Let your prosperity, God's plan is to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a bright future. Let God arise arise oh God arise in your church arise in your glory arise oh God shine oh God revelation has come God awake 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 my healing awake my healing awake my healing loose Loose, loose, loose. Rashe karaba. Rashe kama. Mekarama si. Jesus called his glory. In Luke 21, 27, he says, there's a time that is coming and you will see the son of man. Yes, the same son of man that Nebuchadnezzar saw. The same son of man that died on the cross. The same son of man that was named Jesus who became the Christ. You're going to see him coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Not just glory. Power and great glory. The Hebrew word for power is kayil. And the Hebrew word for great is kayil. In other words, powerful, great glory. And when you see these things get placed, stand up. Lift up your head, your redemption, your freedom is drawing nigh. Your healing is coming now. Your prosperity is coming now. Somebody cry, Kail Blore! Kail Blore! Kail Blore! No matter how powerful the enemy is, Kail Blore! There is no greater glory than the Kail glory of Christ. Kail Blore! And set us free. Kyle Glory, arise, 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 arise in your church, arise in your church, oh God. Summon your power, oh God. Show us your strength as you have done before.
says the earth will be dark. The earth will be dark. And darkness is over Canada. But as the Bible is the living word of God, God is coming down to nations all over the world with his powerful great glory, Shekinah glory. The angels are coming with Jesus Christ. He is the king of glory. But then he, the glory in you, Christ in you, is going to arise. And double glory is going to break the yoke. And double glory is going to break your poverty. And double glory is going to heal you from disease. And double glory will arrest the plague in Jesus' name. Let God arise. Today is the day of Pentecost. And I believe it's happening now. Isaiah 60 verse 1 and 2 says, Arise. Get ready, church. Get ready and let's listen what we must do in the season of harvest, in the season of glory. Shine. In other words, get, you, get off your, your faith, off this dust off faith, dust it off. Be brilliant, be shining. Expectation, expectation. Light, revelation has come. And the glory of the Lord is rising upon you now. Who said yes to that? You miss it. I said the glory of the Lord is coming upon you now. Say glory. Say glory. Roshe karaba kasata de e karaba roshe kalaba city. See the darkness covering the earth. You see the thick darkness over the minds of the people. They don't even know who they are anymore. But the Lord. We see you, his glory appears over you, right over your head. Whoa, I see fire, I see fire, I see fire over your head. People, connect your faith to the prophetic word. Fire! Fire! Tongues of fire again. I'm not leaving this place the same way. Who is going with me? I tell you something. From glory to glory. From strength to strength. From power to power. That's where I'm going. The persecution of the church was increasing. They needed the Shekinah glory of God. The Shekinah glory of God came in prison to Peter. Set him free. He walked out alive. The Shekinah glory of God came to career business people, shepherds, minding their own business on the job. Angels come and start talk to them and they talk to angels. The Shekinah glory of God come to protect his people. Shekinah glory of God appeared to Joseph in a dream. Told him when to run with baby Jesus because Herod is coming to kill him. The Shekinah glory of God. Angels are coming people of God. The Shekinah glory of God appeared to Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane when he was crying out to God and their pair and strengthened him to finish strong. Oh, people of God, lift up your hands. You understand what I'm saying? We have to operate in double glory. We have to operate in double glory, people of God. The Shekinah glory with angelic protection and the Kyle glory. On the last slide, Shekinah glory, this is an outpouring of double glory. An outpouring of double glory. Shekinah glory, God with us. Shekinah glory, God with us. Kyle glory, God in us, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.